I stand here speechless, looking for the exit, scared shitless. Too many minds in my head. Look at them all. Their stares are like hot knives that peel away at my courage, exposing this scared little boy. Here I stand at the foot of my Waterloo as 1,000 voices echo my fears. I, I, I can't turn right, nowhere to go left, brick wall to my back. There, let's get on with this in front of me. What the heck was I thinking I could write poetry? Or more importantly, I have something worthy to say. Sorry, Raul. Um, I've just tried to mute someone else and I've muted okay, you no by mistake. So no could you start that poem again, please? I'll start again. <clears throat> Hang on. Right. Okay. Okay. I stand here speechless, looking for the exit. Scared shitless. Too many minds in my head. Look at them all. Their stares are like hot knives that peel away at my courage, exposing this scared little boy. Here I stand at the foot of my Waterloo as 1,000 voices echo my fears. I, I can't turn right, nowhere to go left, brick wall to my back. There, let's get on with it, look in front of me. What the heck was I thinking I could write poetry? More importantly, I have something worthy to say, or that people even want to hear my words. I feel this knot in my stomach. My mouth is dry. Fuck. I think I'm gonna die. You know, that slow, torturous death, that Spanish Inquisition type shit. Okay, that may be a bit extreme, but where's the proverbial hole in the ground? The one where you free fall endlessly into the shadows of doubt. Don't get me wrong, I wrote a poem filled with words, but fear has a hold of me, it has control of my voice, it tells me all the work I've putting into writing this piece, the hours of practice, memorizing and standing before the mirror, up in the attic, in the dead of summer as beads of sweat pour down my brow and into my mouth like a river of confidence. And now nothing? Nothing has me convinced that my nerves are to be feared. Yeah, yeah, you see that splatter on the brick wall? Those hanging entrails of guilt and shame? That's me from the last time. The last time. The last time. Last time I end up splattered anywhere. Last time I'm fearful of speaking my truth, to bottle it up like a fine wine that grows in value over time. Except for this poem, these words, like countless others, only appreciate when spoken, when shared. Ignoring the energies of courage, realize I'll be damned to have my truth screaming in silence as a white coat harvests it and gently places it in a dish on a table with my other organs after my own autopsy. That can't be my faith, not me. I'm so tired of this insanity, always afraid, scared of my own shadow. If insanity is doing the same things over and over, well then, I want a new insanity. One where my vulnerability is king, you know? It's like screaming at the top of your lungs, gripped with fear as you jump out of a plane for what seems like an eternity, only to realize in the next moment, why the fuck didn't I do this sooner? Okay, the mic, that's my plane. I just have to jump. All I desire lies in the mic. I just have to open up my mouth and let it out. All right, I've got this. I'm worthy to stand here. I'm worthy to speak. I'm worthy to take the mic. I'm worthy, I'm worthy. Okay, breathe, breathe. End of poem. Thank you, fellow poets. Um, I decided to start off with that piece because uh, I was talking to some young people that I still mentor back where I used to live in Kelowna in Western uh, Canada. And they had a big event coming up and they were just all nervous and fearing the nerves. And I was telling them there's a difference between nerves and fear. Nerves is, you know, you're about to do something important. So someone like Clive, you know, I'm someone like Clive and Nick who does a lot of organizing. And when I'm hosting my recital, I don't get nervous, but I found myself being nervous today. So 
I was like, remind yourself, embrace the nurse. So I thought it was fitting to start with that. As Clive uh, said, I'm Raul James. I am a humble poet. Still not sure what that means. I'm a little boy that was from Trinidad and Tobago that grew up in the States, had the great fortune of living in Canada these many years. And uh, I share words. What you do with them, I leave to you. Uh, this next piece kind of symbolizes and captures back on December 17, 2001 at 1.45 in the PM, I had a moment, that epiphany, I heard a voice that steered me into another direction out of victimhood and into understanding myself and understanding life in a different way. I think a couple of years after that, that's when I, you know, kind of shedded my shackles of the corporate world and decided to walk a simpler walk. Anyway, this piece is called The Voice. It was a cold and snowy day. The kind of day where the weather reflected the unpredictability of what was. I was lost in the sea of my attention, surrounded by fog that hosted the demons of torment. And out of nowhere, I heard the lighthouse of your voice. I could not see, but I felt your space within. For too long, I've been trapped as a victim in the echoes of my mind. Venom coursed through my veins as toxic words fumbled with each other while impatiently waiting to be spewed. My body slammed in anguish, battered from years of being lost and blinded, blinded by the rage of my victim's cry. I straddled the thin line between here and there as I swirled in my hangover of grief. My arms acted like a cane that swayed side to side, gingerly searching for a lifeline as I prayed that hope would shelter me from the turmoil of my memories. My mind was a distorted canvas of vibrant colors that housed the whirlwinds of chaos as I stood fully exposed at the crossroads of discomfort. And for a moment, my heart forgot its purpose and skipped beats as tears flooded its chambers with the waters of inevitability. At that same moment, your voice was an invitation to the door of my rebirth. I was cocooned in a placenta of unknown as the dark clouds rained the numbness of sadness. Like a deer in the headlights, I stood paralyzed, unable to run from the fight. My suffering had reached its boiling point from years of piling one-sided perception beneath the canopy of my forest. Psychosis or the burning bush, either way, your voice echoed from the valley of my shadow as a lifeline to the madness of that moment. A voice I knew, a voice I know. The tenor of your words were like a sunset backdrop in the eye of my storm. A gift from the depths that provided a, a force field protecting my battered soul as waves gingerly crashed over me, each serving as a reminder to the spirit I am. Caught in the intersectionality of seconds, space was an illusion of linear time, and I was an unbalanced hiccup of insight awaiting an audience. The gentleness of your voice revealed wonders to my discomfort. I was, still at, uh, I was still unsure of how or even why, but unknowingly the process of shedding my old skin of suffering had begun. There's a beginning and an end to all life. My dash is my vault of wisdom to where experiences are deposited and insight awaits withdrawal. It also houses your voice as a reminder that light cannot exist without dark. I am but one drop in an ocean of drops. I am here now to experience all. Otherwise, this journey would be pointless and quite frankly, boring. So until further notice, I'm celebrating every damn thing. End of poem. And I have a smorgasbord of writings. Uh, poetry came into my life. I think 13 years ago when I was teaching at a private college back in Kelowna, British Columbia. And I was standing positioning an assignment and this blast of inspiration came and I went off curriculum 
and I gave my students an assignment that involved poetry and I did not write poetry. So I figured I'll write a poem if I was gonna give them that assignment. So here's the piece that I wrote so many years ago. This is actually the first piece that I wrote that I shared with anyone. So it's called Conflicted. My pen has become the birth canal that brings my thoughts to life. Thoughts jumbled in my mind of the injustice of perception, corrupted by the expectation of hope. For I am the jewel in the crown of my mind's eye. Conflicted justice, conflicted hope, conflicted. I found myself once again conflicted at the crossroads. Am I the cause on the path of effects hoping for resolving differences? How can one voice change the world, change me? Am I the nothing in the abyss of the everything of my thoughts, accepting the shadows of my guilt and shame? Conflicted love, conflicted fear, conflicted. Many times I've been haunted by the emptiness and inactions of my words. As I seek the wisdom buried in the void of my victim's suffering, Searching high and low for answers beyond the horizon, fighting the tick-tock of opportunity's clock. No comfort within my discomfort with my transformation. Conflicted highs, conflicted lows, conflicted. I am grateful for another rotation as I embrace the fullness of my walk. My solitude and peace flow from within and fuels new perceptions. One day my weary bones will rest while spirit ventures on. So until then, I am the ebb and flow of the infinite loop of birth and death. For the solace runs hot, the solitude runs cold. Conflicted chaos, conflicted mind, conflicted. End of poem. Just let me know now, Nick, because I don't really track myself. Um, I don't remember when I wrote this piece, but uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. I think I might have recited it here the first time I came to Oops, so uh, I'll share it again because I do like it. It's called Equinox of Change. This rhapsody of words is a yawn that I hope will take you on a celestial journey to where love is the invitation to go beyond imagination. You see, she took my hand and in an instant, we were transported to the emptiness of the beginning. We traveled through black holes and wormholes linked only by moments, back to when the playground of time and space was nothing but a thought. Surfing galactic waves as we slingshot around the sun, eyes wide open to the lucid adventure of duality's realm. Gravity ripped us into these carbon-based bodies of pleasure and pain with an intensity that brought forth crying to the equinox of change. 30 kilometers per second, one heartbeat expanding everywhere, everywhere in all places. Out of the dark, light spewed purpose into the fertile void bringing forth my lover's child. Truth by design, we created stories of evolution to make sense of, the mad of this madness, if only to find our place in the vastness. The tears of my lover washed over me to baptize the rhythm that propels life forward on this, the sixth rock to the sun. Her love is complete and allows us to hang our heads as we fight our soul's purpose. Sitting at the intersection of ignorance and discomfort, we are trapped in the illusion of permanence as we swim in the dark conflict of our minds. Our patience and tolerance stretch beyond its elasticity as we await its snapback to sanity. The invisible energy that drove our adventure spirits out of the caves is the same energy of self-realization that fuels our fears of the unknown. It is the uneasiness of knowing that leads to questions that cannot be answered. This is a battle that wages within every living soul. We search high and low to the four corners, stretching beyond the fringe to feel alive. 
but I was born from your breath to die. Death's value comes from time, yet one is guaranteed and the other isn't. You close the door in my mind while opening a window in my heart for wisdom's glow to shine. From a near distance, voices of generations past echo the cry. Are we willing to lose everything, to have everything? While in the same breath from a distance, the voices of tomorrow's souls whisper faint murmurings of a daydream. Are you willing to lose all that we value? to value all. And as the witching hour approaches, I fear the increasing seconds building to my lover's midnight. I pass through ignorance into the chamber of knowledge and out of despair, I empty my cup of ego's water to quench my thirst of hunger and misery. Out of the perpetual fires of conscious souls, my temperance rises like the phoenix silhouette against the full moon splendor. Shame and guilt challenge my night's work, but a new strength derived from my lover's light. Out of the murky waters of doubt, I walk into the sun, sunrise of my redemption, casting shades of worthiness. And I have freed my mind's eye of scarcity song to sing the chorus. We all breathe the same air, walk the same earth, drink the same water. We all come from woman and death will visit us all. The universe is my lover, for all creation is truth. End of poem. I am a simple man that uh, get these downloads. I rarely ever sit down with the intent to write a poem. I think uh, the only time I've ever really done that is whenever I was commissioned. So I tend to get these thoughts, probably like many of you, Sometimes it comes complete, sometimes it comes as a single phrase or whatever, but I get it, play with it or put it away and come back. So a lot of these are just that. I don't, I'm not a poet that says I can sit down and write a thousand poems in a year. I don't do that. But I do enjoy poetry and writing. And here's just a, it's an older one, but it's a, it's a cute, I find it cute. I call it tumble, tumble. Tumble, tumble. My thoughts forever tumble forward, bouncing from hope to wish and back to the ethers. Do my thoughts hope or my hopes a wish, a wish of formulated ideas sprouting from the soil of undreamt dreams, becoming a garden that enriches the art of my soul, fruitful to the imagination of my inner child. Tumble, tumble, like a child, always forward soulfully playing with possibilities, my thoughts journey from my heart's eye, fueling the dreams and hopes that feeds and fuels imagination's life. Words forever tumble forward, wishing upon planted seeds that wills imagination's hope. End of poem. I'll share a couple of newer pieces. I don't know if I've actually recited these anywhere, so. Um, when I was going through, I think it was last night, trying to figure out what I wanted to share, these two stuck out. So these are newer poems. And uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure I have not recited them elsewhere. So this first one is called Unrealistic Paradise. And both of them are kind of a capture of where I think we are today. Pain and suffering weigh down the psyche like a ship's anchor as it threatens the cradle of, cr of critical thinking that questions. The shame of reasons accompanied by thunderous guilt, and at times we forget that life is a struggle by design. The gloom of pessimism hovers like the dark clouds of progress, as it lifts a one-sided perception of an unrealistic paradise. We seek to make the best of possibilities in the constraint as we balance the myth with the notion of our human brilliance. So out of the fertile earth, memories of the ancestors beckon as we venture into the digital clouds of metadata. And as we emerge from the paradigm of despair and ignorance, we fall into mayhem's merry-go-round and the ideology that binds us. Only together, 
can we experience the cycle of life as the torch of time carries the DNA of generations past. Our cumulative choice yields the angst and the depravity void of delight as we unmask the shadows of consequences we still fear. The more things change, the more change stays constant. Today was yesterday's future. That's what powers the next dawn. For I am the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful. We are here to serve the purpose of life. For I am, because you are. End of poem. And this next piece, the twin to that one is called Climate of Dissidence. Tis the ever increasing divide in our mists as the torrid waters breach our patience. It floods our hearts and welcome pain, increasing the rapids of doubt and uncertainty. As we spiral down the rabbit hole into the climate of dissidence, castles of sandbags are built to brace the swollen rage. The debris of intolerance, loathing, and segregation wash upon the shores of our unfettered hearts. Beauty is lost in the turmoil of something rising as power shifts to overwhelm the communal sense. Are we so blinded to the potential of crisis that we forget the storms of the past we've weathered. These times serve as a reminder of the lessons learned and lost. A caveat to the lightning of love that strikes in thunder clouds. My sleep shelters the demons that wander dark lust as fear cloaks the limitlessness of constructed truth. Out of the altered realm, I'm exercised into an array of the unknown. Still fearing, I'm the lily among the thorns of a false crown. Battered and bruised by the chameleon's charm, wherever the burden and choice to surrender lies on my shoulders. For my truth is my book of life, housed in the Akashic Library that is life. End of poem. I have a couple of more um, I will read. I always like to, to, to use, you know, you've, my fellow poets as, as guinea pigs. Here's a piece that I am working on and uh, it's called Feel. To bask in the flow of life's energy is to feel. But what does it mean to feel? Am I, I am beyond happy, sad, excited, down, ecstatic, lonely. The feeling that is me rippled from the initial moment of existence. A wave of feelings caught to me. No, wait, I connected to it. This connection reminds me of knowing that is familiar, yet unfamiliar with this two-dimensional thinking. It washes over the machinery of my mind as I transcend to see beyond a roller coaster of emotions that no longer serve. Am I still asleep? Cocoon in a sack of possibilities? I awake to memories of a feeling that is beyond time and space. I, <clears throat> excuse me, eye to eye with my true self, time expires through the illusion. I see beyond sight. My soul mirrors the understanding, the perception that is me. I feel beyond all my earthly senses to pass the six, to feel. A feelings, the prelude to my every thought is my being thought or thought of feeling. One with its meaning into a feeling beyond life's birth, life's death for nearly, for neither really matters in the grand scheme of things. The feeling carries on. The feeling is my everything. The atmosphere that connects, it is my heart. The flow of mother's tears, the celebration of life. Feeling springs forth life. Life springs forth feelings. Either way, I was always connected to the feeling, to my love. To my truth, is this my life? 
built on experiences where right and wrong, good and bad, light and dark are harbored safely from the turbulent winds of fear. As wisdom, love built a new dawn. My life feels like life's love. My love is life, end of poem. And I have two more before I call this a set. And I, I thank you so much for, for, for attending. I, I'm, I'm so honored to sit in, with, with such an inspiring group of humans where we get to share our thoughts freely and bask in the beauty of poetry. This piece I call, Her Strength is Her Beauty. She is patient with time and expects nothing for she knows nothing happens without a choice and at the right time. She simply holds space to offer a hand for when I fall or shoulder for tears to waterfall. She cloaked my inner child with her unwavering spirit, but my foolish pride had me trapped in a fog of insensibility that just for a moment allowed her beauty to be absent. Only in the constant echoing of doubt did I question her resolve, for you see, her beauty is her strength, and strength is her beauty. And as I stood at the threshold, res hesitating at the roads that laid before, feeling alone and abandoned, I am conflicted by which path to take. I look for courage void of fear as I search both high and low for the strength of character that lingered in the chasm of right and left brain thinking, hoping that my choice this time would remove the rose colored glasses that flooded me with ego's lust for balance between ignorance and blinded intelligence. She's the unspoken whisper that floats upon the trade winds. The subtle, shy slant of her eyes seductively inspires hints of untamed playfulness. The slight tilt of her head highlights her flowing braided hair and the way it partially covers her caressed moon smile. For reasons beyond my understanding, her beauty shined like never before. And as I trembled at the doorway of discomfort, she gently took my hand and placed it upon her heart. And without uttering a word, she reminded me of the flame that burns within. At that moment, her strength was her beauty, for her beauty transcended the moment and appeared as a multitude of orchestrated thoughts. Once again, I embraced her beauty to silence my own will. I accepted her feminine wiles, which unfolded beneath my feet as solid ground. And if I had the audacity to breathe in the particles of her beauty, my lungs will forever be filled, my thirst forever quenched. She invited me into my own vulnerability to see the strength of my own beauty. And as our souls frolicked and pranced in the garden of content, our bodies floated on beds of water lily on a river of her tears with only imagination as our guide. She once again reminded me that alone is a construct designed to blind self. As the day's light crept closer to revealing the night's secrets, I safely cocooned my soul into her beauty to dream dreams of shooting stars that lit up our soul's playground. And as we fell with the sands of time, witnessing time itself stand still, we are reborn into our wild and free selves to dance for the sake of the dance, succulently under the stars by the light of the pale moon, for you see, her strength is her beauty, and her beauty is strength. Um, am I still good for time, uh, Clive? Yeah, uh, one more roll, please. If you, if, if you, yeah, that's, that's fine. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure because I do have just one more. So, and uh, I'll end with this piece. Uh, as I, as, I, as I say thank you and I appreciate Clive and Nick and the, and the followers of, of Ubi Hive to feature me, my reminder to us all is that we are human. And when I talk black and white, I don't mean race. 
because there's one race on this planet that's made of 31 different flavors. And I'm grateful that we have the different shadings of our humanity, otherwise it would be kind of boring. But ultimately we are human. And the words that I share is a reminder for people to look within before you start looking at others because we're either denying or hindering other human beings. So this last piece I share with you is called To Be Human. I was asked the other day if I was feeling burnt out. Without thinking, I reacted with a quick no. Why do you ask as I push back at my friend's question? She said, don't get me wrong. You look good, but tired. My knee jerk no was me being triggered. But why did I? Was there a truth in what she had asked? And if so, why was I triggered? And if there was no truth, why did I get triggered? Truth be told, I am tired. I'm tired of the illusion, delusion, illusion of the fight. Women's issue, gender equality, indigenous rights, Black Lives Matter, religious freedoms, economic equality, sexual freedom, identity politics, climate change, global warming, wealth gap disparity. Did I miss anything? All I see is humans denying humans. And that's what exhausts me. It drains my empathy like a vampire latch to my neck. I feel depleted of intellect as I wrestle with the big question nestled deep in my being. What does it mean to be human? Hmm. Like somehow we're the cat's meow. From up looking down, no color could be seen or gender identified, just maybe a speck. Yet us versus them has us trapped in a prison of imaginary lines. Parliamentary democracy, Republican, communism, green, liberal, libertarian, socialism, progressive. We're all under gravity's totalitarian control on this not so flat earth. Now, gravity may deny my ability to soar with the birds. And my eyes may not be as sharp as when I was a younger man but I only see humans denying humans. So maybe I am tired, maybe I am burnt out, but I still believe in the illusion. I haven't lost hope. What does it mean to be civilized and intelligent as we spin 460 meters per second in this, the paradox of the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful? To me, that's what it means to be human. End of poem. Thank you so much, Oops Beehive. Thank you so much, fellow poets, for being here and gracing me with your presence. Okay. I love you and give a massive, massive wave of love for all James. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah that was a great feature. I love yeah, it. Fantastic. What a way to end as well, Brilliant. mate. Beautiful ending. <laughs>